Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome in. I am Tammy Mausterberti, best-selling author of the book, The Universe is Talking to You, and soon to be released behind me, The Higher Help Method, Stop Trying to Manifest and Let the Universe Guide You. And this is my weekly spirit boost. I'm live here every Thursday at noon Eastern on YouTube and Facebook, usually Instagram as well. But whenever I have a guest, we have to do Instagram upload later. And today I have a special guest. So, you know, I'm a huge proponent in spiritual tools. There are so many different spiritual tools we have available to us to help us navigate this life, to help us to make life easier, to understand life easier. And one of those spiritual tools that I was introduced, oh my gosh, it has to be 15 or more years ago, um, really actually introduced to and and actually had my own reading with is numerology. And you've heard me talk about numerology on here before. Every January, I always talk about how we're moving into a new universal year. And I talk about, you know, your personal years and different things like that. And as part of the Living and Elevated Existence Summit that is still going on and will be going on through um, mid next month is I have experts on. So as part of this Living in Elevated Existence Summit, one of the experts that I had on is Tom Eckert. And we had such a great call. Um, part of his call in the beginning, his technology was a little wonky. And so we were like, you know what? Let's just get you on to the weekly spirit boost. And then people can hear you even clearer. People already loved the interview and love all about it. But I wanted to bring him to a larger audience anyway, because I do love numerology. And so we're going to have a cool discussion today about numerology. We're actually going to help you find your own personal year number. We're going to explain um, sign of, kind of the basics of it and, and what it does as a spiritual tool. So Tom, I discovered um, just this year, actually. And when I discovered him, I was super excited and wanted to have him on the summit because he is a numerology expert. He is an astrologer. He is a Dharma teacher. What I love about him is not only does he provide numerology consultations, so he does one-on-one -on -one consultations with people, but he teaches numerology worldwide. So he teaches other people to be numerologists, which I think is so cool. Um, and I'm not math inclined at all, by the way. But what I love about numerology is it's super easy and it's super math. And it's not like, you know, which, by the way, I can still screw up because I'm not math inclined. But it is not as difficult as, say, algebra, which I prayed for season. So um, so Tom is really trained in the yogic tradition. He teaches Dharma um, with the blessings of his teacher. And he really works with numerology as a tool, which I love, to support growth and the soul evolution. And numerology can really, especially your life path number, which we are going to talk about. We all come in with a life path number based, based on our birth date. The life path number can really tell you your soul's purpose the gifts that you came in with, the strengths, the weaknesses. And it also can be used to look at your the energy that you are dealing with each year by year for your personal year. Um, so we're going to get into all of this and more. I'm going to stop talking and I am going to bring Tom in. If you guys have questions as we're going, you know that you can pop them into the comment box, say hello, um, and ask any questions as we're going. So let me bring Tom into the chat. Hi, Tom. Hello. Thank you, Tammy, so much for having me here. What a What a pleasure. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here um, and to bring you to even a larger audience than just the summit. And so, um, so I gave the whole introduction and I love numerology and I love it as a spiritual tool and I love how accurate it is, um, really just sort of based on our birth date and our birth name, right? So for people who are maybe new to it or maybe kind of like have heard of it or whatever, can you sort of explain to everybody what numerology is and how it works to really help us in so many areas, like I mentioned earlier. Beautiful question. Um, so the way I see it is that every soul, each one of us, incarnates into a particular lifetime. And as we incarnate, we take on a particular energy body. And that energy body, that unique blueprint with unique traits and intentions um, that also connects to the environment we're gonna be in. 
the playground we're going to play in and learn and master uh, and move on to the next stage of evolution on our soul journey is actually depicted in the numbers. And the way we get to those numbers is by um, unveiling what's behind our full name at birth and our date of birth. So basically our full name and our date of birth show us it's like they they it's like activating a gps for the soul okay to to basically show us that unique energetic blueprint we've decided to focus on and master and embody during a particular incarnation okay yes and so I know we have talked about and, and what you teach is there's, I mean, there's so much in depth that we can go into, but there's three sort of main numbers that we can get to. Um, I think based on birth date and name, um, there's Absolutely. three, there's three main numbers that we can get to that are really kind of the core of who we are, what we're doing here and all of that. So can you explain, I mentioned on the top that we're going to talk about life path number before we get into the nitty gritty. Can you explain what are these three numbers that we can get in numerology that can help us uncover these things? Okay, fantastic. So most numerologists refer to five core numbers, okay? The life path, the expression number, the solarage number, the personality number, and the birthday number. Now you can... Uh, omit the last two and focus only on the first three ones, the life path, the expression number, and the solar numbers. These are what I call the sacred triad because they are they hold the 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 most the, the most gravity in our chart. If you only know these three numbers well, each and every one of them and how they interact with one another, you have an in, you'll have an incredible, understanding of who you are or any other person you know around you yes. um yeah and so wanna... yeah so can you explain because so really it's 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 our birthday and our our name our birth name right even if we've changed our name right. but our birth the birth name that makes up these numbers so including can you... middle names yeah, including middle names. Mm -hmm. So can you share, um, you mentioned the three numbers. Can you explain what, what does each number reveal? Okay, awesome. So I would say, um, first of all, the life path is the central axis around which everything else revolves. So in, in a way, it's also good to know like the order of magnitude. The life path is the most impactful in our chart. Secondary would be the expression number. Tertiary would be the solarge. Okay, and the life path is like, imagine that out of all the numbers, there's this one particular uh, central lesson that is going to accompany you throughout your entire life. The main topic, or let's say array of topics that your soul wants to master throughout this lifetime. That's really the life path. And as such, the life path will, um, by nature, force us to go through all the range of experiences that that particular number has to uh, offer, the light and the shadow and everything in between on every level of our life. Okay, so that's a life path, like the deepest lesson, the deepest intention that we need to uh, master throughout this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Shall we talk about the expression number? Yes. Expression number. So the expression number, imagine we, so now we, we talked about that essence, right? The life path. Like, like the who we are, the deepest lesson we're, we're about to focus on during this incarnation. The expression number takes that essence and manifests it in the world. So the expression number, as the name suggests, it's about expressing, but expressing what? Expressing the essence, taking that life path and manifesting it full on in life, in the world, navigating this life by, you know, take, taking out that uh, light and manifesting in, in in behavior in 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 action in choices in career and so on and so forth yeah the soul urge number is interesting because it has a lot to do with um our aspirations our goals the the dreams you know like what what, what when i ask you hey tammy close your eyes and tell me what what is your vision uh for tammy in 10 years from now like what does it look like you know, are the deepest kind of dreams that we have that our soul dreams about. So it's like if, so like the life path is who we are. The expression number is how we manifest it, like the toolbox. 
and the soul urge is like where do we want to take all of this like the actual form giving it form giving it like a real you know a, a, a real living kind of vivid um scenery if that okay. makes sense Yes, no, that totally makes sense. And and I know in a reading, you sort of look at all of these pieces, um, not only to explain to people sort of what, you know, what is the purpose you came in with? What are the strengths that you have? What are the, um, the negative aspects of this number that you can get tripped up with, right? But um, you really look at all of it and, and, and we're going to get to sort of the, the year by year, because there's a, there's a predictive quality to this as well, True. where you can, you know, someone can come to you and say, you know, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z, and you can look at the numbers to help them see maybe where they're going or what they should be focused on and things like that. Um, which is what really has blown me away at numero with numerology even years ago when I had a reading was it wasn't just like, hey, you, you know, because you, I'm a life path 11, which we're going to get to life paths in a sure. second. Um, and so my life path is this more spiritual life path would would have me writing and teaching and exploring consciousness and sharing this with other people and inspiring and, yes. and, inspiring. and, mm -hmm. and I had no idea. And when I first had the reading, um, I was just, I was sort of embarking on this path and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm actually where I was meant to go. I'm actually doing what I planned to do when I came You're in. Aligned. You're um, aligned. Right. I'm totally aligned. And then there was this predictive stuff that came out. And again, I think when we talked on the summit, I said it was like, had to have been 15 or more years ago when I had it, uh, when I had the reading. And a lot of the things that was said in that reading that wasn't even, you know, you know remotely a thought in my mind, maybe as a, a seed <laughs> have have happened. So it's just so amazing to me. But I want to start with the life path number. So everybody that is listening has a life path number yes. based on their birth date. So explain to everyone here how they can get their life path number. Okay, so there are a few ways that numerologists go about that. I'll explain the easiest way. Okay. Um, basically, take your date of birth, whatever it is, April 7th, 1980 and simply add up all the numbers in one go mm -hmm. so april 7th right four plus seven plus 1980 plus one plus nine plus eight plus zero whatever the end result is i'm not going to calculate it now because sorry it's going <laughs> to take me too much effort <laughs> but but that that's going to be your life path you want to you want to reduce that result let's say you get i don't know 32 that's your end result then you reduce 32 to a single digit three plus two that will be a five your, your, your end digit would be like the compound digit would be, I don't know, like a 63. Then it mm -hmm. would be six plus three equals nine. You always reduce to a single digit. Okay. 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 Simple. Now, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so there, simple. so there are, so you always reduce to a single digit, but I know there are master numbers that don't get reduced. So, True. so what are, I think there's three, right? What are the master numbers that if you add up your birth date and you get one of these master numbers, you don't reduce it? True. So the master numbers are 11, right? If you get 11, you do not reduce it to a two. It's an 11 two. Okay. Um, if you get 22, it's a 22 slash four. It's a master number 22 and mm -hmm. 33. Some numerologists, by the way, uh, consider any kind of double digit that's identical, 44, 55, 50, 66, and so on as master numbers. There's a debate going on about that. It's not like, right, uh, carving mm -hmm. stone this one. Everybody agrees on the 11, 22, and 33. By the yeah. way, also karmic debts are something that, again, just like a little in brackets, something that mm -hmm. we do not reduce. 13, oh, okay. 14, 16, and 19. It has also like a very, very unique impact on our chart. We won't get into that, but yes. just like as a right? Some interesting piece of information. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I remember years ago when I had it done, I had like, I, I don't want to say, I want to say my karmic debt was like a nine or something. I don't remember, but I was like, why do I have so much karma? <laughs> it's like, what's going on? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a whole, that's another number that you would find out, you know, in a reading and things like that. Um, okay. So when we're talking about personal life numbers, can you give us some examples of what a number would tell us about like for example let's let's just do um somebody yeah. in the chart um mm -hmm. the first one we got um barb said she's a seven so can you give us an example of what a life path number of a seven would be 
or information mm. about that? Barb. Hey, Barb. First of all, <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure. I'm not so familiar with seven. No, I'm mm. kidding. I'm a seven. So, hey. Oh, uh, yay. Perfect. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Seven is all about, so okay, we have a life path seven, right? So we have to learn the light and the shadow of a seven, right? We have to learn the entire range. The light of seven is going to be uh, learning all about wisdom and depth and penetrating into the behind the scenes of life, almost like seeing behind the matrix, searching for deep understanding, root understanding, wanting to really, it's a seeker. It's the path of the seeker, someone who wants to know the truth, who asks the big questions of life. The shadow side of seven is touching those depths that most people are afraid of, including ourselves, touching that deep subconscious, that oceanic depth that sometimes we're really afraid of. Therefore, sevens will often deal with anxieties, fears, depressions, fear of losing control and going crazy. Really, these are like, it's, it's really interesting. You go very high and deep. You also have to touch those places deep mm -hmm. inside of you right so that's an example seven yes yes now how now how would a life path number help you understand sort of the the lesson or the purpose like can you use seven as an example of what maybe a, a purpose or a main lesson would be for that number so so what i just said so the main oh, okay. lesson, the main lesson would actually be for example uh to learn how to uh, approach any, let's say you're, you're dealing with some difficult, I uh, you know, life topic. You have issues in relationships. Mm -hmm. Seven has to get to the bottom of it. You have okay. to really, that's the, you, you're, you're, you're learning how to apply wisdom and how to look all the way into the very root of stuff. That's literally what you're mastering. And another aspect of that would be to have, it's another like lesson of seven to have mm -hmm. deep faith in your inner knowing. So Sometimes life puts us like in this, I don't know, like in a in-between zone where things are uncertain. And during such times for a seven, it's super important to trust what they already know to be true, even if they cannot feel or see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, part of a lesson of, of seven, trusting the inner yes. wisdom. Yes, that makes sense. So Susan is asking, so how do I reduce 17? So that would be one plus seven, right? So that would be an eight. Exactly. One plus seven equals eight. Okay, yeah. perfect. So we actually have a bunch of eight. So why don't we, can you give us some information about a life path eight? Ooh, you know that, first of all, for all you eights, you know that uh, my students always have the most difficult time grasping like the meaning of an eight. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. So eight is about learning how to use your power properly. It is about overcoming. People with a life path eight will oftentimes have to encounter uh, difficulties in life so that they can prove to themselves that they have the power of overcoming. Eight is about consistency, drilling through all, obstacle, all obstacles and proving to yourself that you can succeed. That's why, for example, you will have very often athletes, competitors with number eight or business people right? People that push themselves to the top, that overcome all the obstacles to, to, to prove to themselves that they can use their power and um, win over all the difficulties and eventually uh, be triumphant in a way. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's one way, one way of describing the eight. Okay. 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 Perfect. So let me ask you about the, the master numbers. Cause I think sometimes people think, Ooh, a master number. I want, I want to be a master number. Right? right. Um, right. so can you share sort of what, what are master numbers and what does that mean compared to if you get a one through a nine? Cause it's okay. not rosy. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not at all. I was, it's like one of the first thing I tell people, like, don't go out there and brag about your master numbers because you don't right. know what, what you're asking for. It's like, really, um, it's like having a master number can be a blessing, can be also very difficult to deal with. It's just mm -hmm. like, just a simple way to imagine it is that every number is like uh, some degree of energetic charge. Okay. And you need a conductor to hold that, you know, that energetic current. Okay. Energetic mm -hmm. current, I meant. And a mask number is a bigger energy current, okay? And mm -hmm. for that, you need to be able to handle it. Now, that bigger energy current means that on the soul level, you wanted to, in, in this particular incarnation, when you're embodying the mask number, you want to somehow master a quality and share it in an, uh, uh, on a bigger scale. For example, what you're doing, you have 
you have uh, followers, you have listeners, you have students, you have, you're sharing books. It's like you're taking something that you are learning and you're sharing it on a bigger scale. You're allowing more downloads, more information, more light to come into your being and you're, uh, you're teaching it, you're passing it on. So in a way with the mass numbers, we are all held uh, accountable by the higher forces of the universe more so than single digit numbers. And so mm -hmm. that's, you know, and that's kind of like the blessing because we're also receiving more light in a way, more inspiration, more downloads on the one hand. On the other hand, if we're not kind of up to the task, if we're living a very complacent life, very sedentary, like not really moving ourselves into growth, into evolution, then the mass number can become much more disturbing and nagging than a, than a regular single digit number remaining unfulfilled, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes. Oh, no, that totally makes sense. Um, and I want to get to to personal year numbers. But before we do, I just want to ask, there's a bunch of people saying that their life path is nine. So can you briefly touch on nine as well as a life path number? Yeah, uh, I'll admit to the fault of really, really favoring number nine, even though it's not my <laughs> life path. <laughs> yes. Um, there's something amazing about number nine. Uh, so number nine is Okay, if you want an archetype, think about like a universal heart. Some like imagine the sun, the sun at the center of the solar system, just shining its light, giving life to all the planets, to all the solar system and beyond, just giving all the bounty that it has without any conditions. That's this universal, unconditional giving. That's nine, uh, Nine's ultimate, we can say, destiny. It's just to give that, to give without wanting anything in return. Philanthropy, compassion, uh, helping, you know, helping the poor, supporting people, uh, bestowing goodness. Um, it's it's really what it's it's like it's it's melting away all the limitations between me and another. Just like what's mine is yours, sharing everything, you know? Yes. Big generous heart. Oh, I love that. And you know what? I, I'll ask about this too. So um, Eldred is saying nine is everywhere in my chart. So if you have a number that kind of repeats, right, whether it's through your right. name or um, what does that mean? Does that just mean that you're carrying more of that vibration of that number with you or how does that work? Right. Hey, Eldred. Eldred and I know <laughs> each other. Um, <laughs> so um, yes, basically when we have a lot of one number, of course, on the soul level, it means that like our soul really wants to hone in on that quality. Now it's not always easy, just like, you know, eating, like take any food, eat a lot of it, even if it's considered healthy, I don't know, parsley or something, you know, <laughs> eat a lot of parsley, just like, right. it's not going to be good for you. So in a sense, when we have a lot of one number, and I've seen people with lots of nines, which is like, it's more, it's, it's more rare, but you have that then it's very intense. Like the nine is going to be super amplified in your chart, but also the shadow side. And that's like the price we pay. You, you are, you need to master, like your soul wants to come full circle. Like it wants to, to really uh, um, finalize some lesson pertaining to that number. So it really pushes you into that number full on. You have to meet the, the greatest capacities and powers of that number, but also the greatest shadows of the number. That's what happens when it's like amplified in your chart, when it repeats itself. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Cause I remember even in my reading, I, I don't remember the number, but I remember them saying you have a lot of like threes or whatever the heck it is in the chart. And, yeah. and I know it meant, I knew it meant something. Um, and you know, so, just one, 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 little, one little thing, just yeah. half, half a minute. Um, the only number that can repeat itself five times in your core numbers mm -hmm. is only number nine. Oh, wow. The only number that can repeat itself in all five core locations. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to ask about, um, and what I love about numerology too, like in a reading is that like, you can look at your numbers and your spouse's numbers or your numbers and your child's numbers, and you can learn things about that relationship. Um, which I think is fascinating as well. Um, but there's also, like I said, sort of that predictive quality to it. So I want to get into personal year numbers, right? So if everybody knows this is my life path number, that never changes. It's what you were born with. That's you, right? right. The personal year number is the energy that you are working with for that year. 
also based on your birth date. So can you explain to people how to find their personal year number, which I know only goes one through nine. So there's no master numbers in that. It's literally you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then back to one. Um, so how can people find what personal year they're in right now? So just a tiny little correction. Oh, okay. You do, you do have master numbers. Oh, do you? I never knew that. You do. You do. Absolutely. So for example, uh, I'm right now in a one year, but next year, it's not going to be just a two. It's going to be an 11 to personal year for me because, uh... okay. And I'll explain. So okay, the, yes. way, right, the way to calculate personal years is super easy. First of all, let's settle the debate. Okay. Tammy and I already talked about this in the summit. So yes. some numerologists uh, calculate personal years from January to January. The other school of numerologists, me included, uh, calculates a personal year from birthday to birthday. In my opinion, it simply makes it more personal. That's why I adhere to the latter method, methodology. So basically, it's we do the same thing as we do with our life path number, right? Basically, your life path number is the personal year you were born in. Your mm. first personal year, Tammy, is an 11 too. That's the year you were born into. Oh, okay. You understand? Yes. That's, that's, so, so if I want to know my current life path, I simply uh, place my month and day of birth and mm -hmm. the last year in which my birthday took place. Right? So let's say my birthday, I'm born in October. So my birthday is always in the end of the year. My last birthday was the second of October 2023, not 2024. I said I didn't have my birthday yet. So I have in 20, to right. okay. in 2024. So October 2nd, 2023, in my case, right? Mm -hmm. So for, for for now, only people that were born on January, February, and the beginning of March have had already their personal year transition during 2024. The rest okay, of us, somebody yeah. born like in May, well, like they are still they are still within their personal year in 2023 until they reach yes. May. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So, so for me, I was I'm September, right? So right. I'm when it turned when it came January. I'm not changing my personal year based on 2024 nope. until I hit September minus 14th, 2024, and then I take on that four energy. Exactly. So right now, right. So right now I am still, and this is the way that I learned it. Now I, there's so many numerologists that again, go by you where it's like, oh, it's January. Everybody's personal year number changes. But the way that I learned it was, no, you're going based on your birth date to birth date. So for me, I would take um, like, and basically we're in 2024. So unless your birthday is in January, February, or up to March 7th right now, you're still using 2023 until exactly. you hit that 2024 number. So for me, exactly. I would do nine plus one plus four plus two plus zero plus two plus three. Plus three. And that is my personal year number. That's now, your current personal year, yes. I am fascinated because I never went. So basically you're saying if I add up my numbers and I get an 11 as my personal year number, I don't mm -hmm. drop that down to you two. Don't drop it down. No, if you I get, uh, uh, no, no. Even if you get, uh, if you, even if you end up having 29, 29, two plus nine, uh, sorry, uh, 29. So yeah, two plus nine. Right. The, equals the, 11. Right. The, the, it equals 11. That will be where you stop. Like you don't do 29 mm -hmm. equals two, you know, it's like mm -hmm. there's 11 in, in the middle and 11 has its own kind of uh, honorable, you know, place. So it's like 11, two, okay. and it, you will really feel the difference between like a two year and an 11, two year. Oh, That's right. Like right. A very distinct difference. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I just learned something because I didn't know that I've always been doing just, oh, it's one through nine and blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah. basically the same thing as your birthday. If you get, if you do your personal year and you get an 11, a 22 or a 33, you it's go with it, that. It okay. It yes. Yes. Oh, yes. that's so cool. So and can it's you, important. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to say, so can you share, can you explain like the difference between like, say a personal year two and a personal year 11? Like what would be the difference? Oh gosh. That? Ooh, huge. <laughs> I mean, huge. I mean, let's say uh, a personal year number two gives you the opportunity to go a bit more inside, you know, um, focus more on relationships, on the people around you. Sometimes if you've initiated certain projects in the pro in the year prior, like year number one, because the year, the personal years are a progression that makes sense, like seasons. So yes. year number two is going to be a quieter time, a time to go inwards, 
tend to your project. It's a bit like, okay, I've sowed the seeds in year number one. Now in year number two, it's a quiet time. I, I water the plant. I put some fertilizer. I make sure it has enough light. You know, it's tending to, it's, I, I got pregnant year number one. Now I'm taking care of the pregnancy. In year right. number three, it'll, I'll give birth. Okay. But yes. number two is like really taking care, nourishing myself properly, taking care that everything is fine. Everything is okay. Everything is nourished tending to the relationships, tending to the connections to the environment, make sure that everything is kind of safe and healthy and good. Year number 11. Oh my gosh. Completely different story. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. Uh, year 11 can be, imagine like a thunderbolt that comes like uh, thundering down and like really brings a lot of light into your system. And it can be, a year of immense growth, immense spiritual growth, very often brought about by some degree of upheaval because it's it's like bringing so much light into all these nooks and crannies that are usually, um, I don't know, like in the dark. And, mm -hmm. and so big transformations can happen during like an 11 to a year. It can be sometimes challenging. So it's good to know that. Uh, because it kind of, it shakes you. It, it wants to wake you up. That's the whole thing of 11. It wants to wake you up as a master number, as a life path, and also yeah. as a personal year. So big difference. You will yeah. also, just, just, just to finish this off, like, you know, you will have some elements of the two in there for sure. But mm -hmm. you will see it's a huge difference. Huge. Oh, wow. That is yeah. so cool. I'm so excited to know this new information that I didn't know. <laughs> um, and and it, what's funny to me is what I find about the personal year for me personally, when I whenever because I always look it up like, OK, what am I going into? And I always feel like some of that energy starts, you know, even a couple months before you hit that that date, you know, like it's almost right. like the energy of the new year is starting. Um, but whenever I look it up, I always find that it's so on target for what, what I'm doing and what I'm going through. And so last year I was in a two year, which you just talked about. Yep. And I was, I was, you know, in my cave, writing my book, doing my, you know, just taking care of myself and going through that whole process. And then the three year I am, I went into um, September, 2023, where you're talking about giving birth and I have a book coming out in April. And so did I have, did I plan this? Did I, I didn't look at my numerology and say, this is the year I'm going to write a book. And this is, a no, I just did. It just happened. Right. But when I look it up, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe it lines up so perfectly. Which so I only, want, oh, go ahead. Uh, which, which only comes to show how accurate and real and authentic numerology is. Yes. That's what is so fascinating to me about it. And, and so I want to ask you, um, in terms of that, the, like, if people come to you for a reading in terms of like the predictive qualities of it, do you, you, I know you use a bunch of different numbers and I know you also, because you do astrology, bring that, you know, kind of bring that into a reading as well, which I love as also, um, we should just talk about astrology another time, but, um, <laughs> But in terms of that, like how, how can you explain sort of the predictive quality of it and how somebody can kind of predict where they're going or what might happen in a certain area of their life based on the numbers? Right. So. So, OK, there, there are two ways to look at it. So, um, first of all, our core numbers have a descriptive quality, meaning they describe who we are. Right. I can look at your core numbers and know who you are. But let's say you're a child. Tammy, I think you're a mom, right? So how, I'm a stepmom, yeah. Okay. So okay. So um, so I mean, you, when you look at a child, okay, let's say they're five year old, and I look at their core numbers, mm -hmm. I'm in fact in many ways looking at their future because most of these numbers have not yet been like manifested. They 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 have not grown into full fruition. So yeah. when I when I speak to parents, I'm describing to them who their kid is going to be. And I can give them a lot of detail about who they're going to be and what they will have to go through and the experience that they will have to go through based on their core numbers. That's one aspect of predicted numerology. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is really looking into what we just talked about, personal years, yes. uh, period cycles, uh, looking into the table of events. These are all interesting, you know, uh, topics that of course I recommend everyone who is interested to kind of like dive deeper into all of these, all of these, you know, table of events is, is like, again, it's too complex to explain, but it's like, 
a way to break down every energy in our name into some form of event or energy that will accompany each and every year of our life. A lot of information, a lot of information. Then we have our personal years. We have the age number. We have the cycles and the pinnacles. Mm-hmm. And, a few yes. more details. and you know, you, you kind of like put all of that together and you tie the dots. And sometimes it's like this, you know, somebody's asking you a question, like, will I have a relationship coming soon? And if you really see that when, after tying all those dots, the, the scales tip very clearly in the direction of, yeah, like, wow, there's a lot of energy moving in the direction of a relationship at a certain point in time in the age of uh, 35, you know, wow, there's a lot of potential going there. Yeah. Then I would tell the person, look, I'm not going to tell them you for sure will find like the love of your life, but I'll tell them, look, there's a very, very high probability that in the age of 35, you yes. will find a, a lasting relationship. And I will also suggest that they play along, that they cooperate, they become a co creator with that energy. That's mm-hmm. like a, a balance between fate and fortune, yes. and, uh, free will. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And, and it, it almost like helps you focus on things or say, oh, well, right. this I the energy is supporting me this year for this, yeah, right? Exactly. So I can do my part. And it's funny because when we did the the summit interview, I talked about how I, I must have been like maybe 30 or something when I had the the reading. Um my la- you know, the last numerology reading that I had with this woman. And she had said to me at the time, like, listen, if you get married before the age of 37, or it was something to that effect, like I, you know, I, I just don't see it working. It's not gonna work. I feel like you're gonna this is when this is really when you're gonna meet this person and you know, it's not going to be perfect, but you guys are going to work on things together and all this other stuff. And I remember at the time being aggravated because I'm like, I'm 30. You're telling me I can't get married till I'm 30. But the <laughs> funny thing is I literally met my husband right after I turned 38. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it's incredible to me. Okay, wait. So I want to go to some comments um, really quick before um, we go. Um, so hold on one second. So somebody is saying, so, okay. So Tina is saying personal year equals 15. So then she would take the five and the one and it would be a six, correct? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So Tina, so she would be, um, a six. In more Um, advanced numerology, in more advanced numerology, we will also look at that double digit, like a 15, six versus a 24, six. Again, just like little tidbits of, uh, you know, snippets of numerology, but yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Barb is saying, so for me, using current year number is nine. Is that what I focus on for the year? So is that the energy that she has um, working on her for the year? Exact, Barb. So so between your birthday, uh, between birthday to birthday, as long as you're in that energy, uh, definitely all the lessons of number nine for better or worse, so to speak. Like you want to really go with that energy, the energy of let go, the energy of expansion, the energy of vision, the energy of looking at the bigger picture, the energy of moving on, number nine. Okay, Mm -hmm. letting go of the old and allowing that butterfly to spread its wings out of that caterpillar. Let that caterpillar go, right? And allow yourself to soar higher, number nine. Yes, yes, I love that. Another Barb, uh, different Barb, says, my life path number does not describe me at all. Would you comment on that situation? So what, what, have you ever heard of that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes, and that's uh, maybe Tammy that, um, you know, it connects to, ties in very well with what um, I told you uh, behind the scenes about Mm -hmm. numbers correlating to one another, right? We can talk about numbers as standalone Mm -hmm. qualities, life path. Expression number solar, right. but they 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 interact with one another. Yes. Sometimes, and I'll give you like a, an interesting scenario. Let's say I am a two life path, like yourself. Although for you it's eleven two, but let's say I'm a two life path. But then it is it's it's in a way surrounded by qualities, strong numbers like let's say eight and four. Eight and four are very you know uh, grounded. They're very kind of like uh, mind oriented. They're very uh, strong in their ways, and it's very easy sometimes numerologically that some other sides of our being take over or overshadow our life path. It's almost like we sometimes don't have access to that number as easily as it's easy. Like sometimes we'll just lean into some other qualities. Uh, in our chart more than our life path. And in such a case, I would definitely take that into some kind of a process of inner work to get in touch with the life path because not being in touch with our life path 
for the long run is uh, a recipe for unhappiness, we can say. So it can mm -hmm. happen 100%, definitely. Yes. Not uncommon at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But again, it's sort of that. And that's where I think all those, I mean, we just talked about some numbers and you kind of like talked about it, you know, the karmic number or the pinnacle. And there's, there's so many pieces to the puzzle um, that, that m almost like bring the melody together. Right. right. It's like, right. yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So I want to, number one, I want to tell everybody, and I don't normally do this, but I did put the link to um, Tom Summit offers in the YouTube and the uh, Facebook description. So Tom actually is offering two different things through our summit. Um, number one, there's a course to learn numerology yourself because he does teach it so that you can learn to, to really understand not only yourself, but maybe the other people in your life. Um, so he has that, but then he's also doing um, readings, one-on-one -on -one readings, and he's discounted those readings for our group. Um, and what's awesome about her re his readings is it's an hour and you can bring absolutely any anything that you want. He lets you bring three questions into the reading and he looks at all of the numbers to answer them. Um, so I just want to let you guys know that again, I normally do not offer it outside of the summit. I'm doing it temporarily. If it gets out of control, we're going to, we'll bring it down, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I'm doing it temporarily just because we're having him on here. Um, and, and we happen to have the offer going on right now. So I'm just letting you know that, um, but I want to end with, um, the universal year, right? So we are right. all in, I believe an eight universal year. Correct. Can you explain number one, what the eight universal year, what energy it carries? And number two, how a universal year impacts everyone? Oh gosh. <laughs> I made, I made a whole episode on my podcast about this in particular. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, so it's, it's really goes in depth into that, but I will say, um, it's, it's okay. It's, the thing is like, okay, I can, I can, I can speak about eight as a standalone energy and the general lessons that eight has, but I can tell our audience today that this particular eight year we just entered in January. So it's pretty fresh still is gonna face us with serious decisions that we will all have to take as a collective. Okay. It's mm -hmm. like this particular eight year, collectively we will have to like we will have to make certain moves like it, we, we cannot stay on the fence um mm -hmm. and it, it'll be it'll be seen in all kinds of ways and forms but it's like eight as an energy it doesn't let you procrastinate okay. eight co eight comes to you and tells you listen you got all this unfinished business here take care of it and like you know just like leaves all these like like a pile of paper like on your on your desk and says like just take care of all these things that you didn't take care of and so collectively there are many things we need to look at mm -hmm. you know and and um we will feel it like we yeah. will have to we will have to like make some uh final decisions about 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 collective stuff right and no, I mean, and I, no matter what personal year you're in you are being affected by the eight energy because it is the universal year yes. Okay. Totally, totally. Okay. You're, it's kind of like an, uh, you know, like this uh, Russian doll, like a doll, a doll within a doll within a doll. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, and I just want to ask one more question. Um, Peggy said, "I looked up life path number three. I am a professional organizer, and it states I can be disorganized. So is that <laughs> kind of the negative, positive side of that number? And hopefully, it sounds like she's on the positive side. No, no, no. I would not say that. I would say okay. Peggy, that 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 I would say Peggy that you simply and most probably like uh you have other numbers in your chart that um that offset the disorganized side of number three you possibly mm -hmm. have a four or a six uh or even a one that can be very focused and clear and precise or a four very grounded and very calculated or a six again very grounded very connected both to people and to to earth so Again, you might have balancing factors that make you both creative, like three, and super organized. So, no, no conflict there. The life yes. path is not is not the the whole of you, not at all. Yes, yes, perfect. Yeah. I love that, and that's why I, I mean, the life path gives you a lot of information. But like you said, your birth name and and all of these different things kind of commingle together to help understand you, what you're doing, how you are, where you're going. <laughs>
Yes, yes, yeah. totally, yeah. totally. They really come together as a dance, really. Yes. So it's like you, you can never look at it like a standalone. It's a bit like, you know, uh, give me a puzzle and I show you, hey, Tammy, look, I found this little piece. And it's like, okay, but like, what is the picture? Like, what, what is it? Yes. Right? Yes. So it's only in the coming together. Life path with expression number. Expression number with soul edge number. Soul edge with life path. And then all this sacred triad that we spoke about, right? This, mm -hmm. like, how does life path expression and soul edge, when they're really blended together, what does it look like, right? What yeah. does three with a six behave like? In your case, 11 with a, with a three. Or you have a one and a two, right? One and a two, for example, can have issues in relationships. That's why mm -hmm. maybe, right? It takes time until a one and a two finds a solid relationship, right? <laughs> so it's, right. It, it, it's a thing, right? So we mm -hmm. can learn so much. Sure. So yes. much. Yes, it's that's what's so fascinating to me is just how accurate it 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 really is. Um, not just as a whole, but like I said, sort of the, you know, as you're going through the different years. And that's why I always look it up because it's like, okay, what energy am I playing with this year? What's gonna, you know, what's likely to happen? That type of thing. So totally. okay. Oh my gosh, we've gone over. Um, and I have to go get ready for my summit. I'm actually teaching my second class as part of the summit on signs and synchronicity. So I'm gonna go get ready for that. But Tom, thank you so much for oh. being here with us. I, I'm definitely going to have you back. I, I, you know when I want to have you back again definitely is in January because we can talk about the new personal year. Um, oh, the I, new yeah. universal year. The universal oh, that's year. what I meant. The new, new universal year. Yes, correct. Yes. Yes. Um, but thank you so much for being here and for, for joining us here on top of also the summit um, for the offers that you've put together for everybody. Um, and just everything that you do. I absolutely love numerology. I love that you are so in sync with what I've learned. And I feel like I attracted you to me for that. Um, so thank You're you so much time. for, thank you so much for being here with us again. Uh, um, and for all you do and for sharing so much awesome information with everybody. Thank you, Tammy, for what you do and for having me here, for being so generous. And thank you for all the listeners for just being here and listening. And I hope you learned something. A lot of yes. food for thought. A lot yes. of food for thought. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much, so much. So you guys definitely um, check out uh, the things that Tom is offering. They are only, oh, they're only available for a limited time. They're not going to be available forever. They're only through the summit. Um, but if anything sells out, we will take them down. Um, so thank you so much for being here, everyone. Um, as I always say to you, have an amazing and elevated and beautiful weekend and do something, anything that brings you joy this weekend, that makes you happy, that raises your vibration because you deserve it. You deserve to have some joy. I don't care how small or little it is. Make sure you carve out that time for yourself. And I will be back here, of course, next week for another weekly spirit boost. And I will see you all then. Bye, everyone. Bye.